Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Tuesday. Coming at you with a uh, full blaster case of 2020 Panini Prism Football. Got a nice little discount for you that a lot of people took advantage of. If you bought at least two teams, you'll be eligible for the Chargers No Vet Commons ship. So let's see who's going to win the Chargers. So first off, big thank you to everybody who uh, picked their teams. Appreciate it. Looked like it ended up being, uh, there you go, Tommy with Last Spot Mojo. Thanks, Tommy. Let's sort by column A by your first names. So as the rules go, this is, I think most of you are familiar with this. This is kind of how we do a lot of these sorts of things. If you buy at least two teams, you'll get one entry for the Chargers. Four teams, two entries for the Chargers. Six teams, three entries for the Chargers, so on and so forth. Just buy an even number of teams. So Brian bought four, so that's two entries for the chance of the Chargers. Christopher only got one. Corey got two, that's an entry. Dennis got two, that's an entry. Dustin only got one. Gail got two. That's an entry. Harry got four, that's two entries. Joshua got four, that's two entries. Logan M got one, or two, that's one entry. Oliver got two, that's one entry. Ryan P got two, that's one entry. Scott W with two, that's one entry. And Sean M with two, that's one entry. All right, so I got Sean, Scott, Ryan, Oliver, Logan, Josh, Harry, Gail, Dennis, Corey, and Brian. I just wanted to spot check and make sure. All right, so let's copy those names. So there's 14 names there. There's some, there's a dice, some dice, the list, and name on top. Look at the chargers in this break. Good luck. After, let's randomize that list. Three and a four, lucky seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And seventh and final time, name on top is going to be Logan M. There you go. After seven times, Logan, congrats. He spoke that into existence. All right, now we can print and rip. Hey, thank you for getting in, Logan. Appreciate it. And there's the case right there. All right, 2020 Prism Blaster. So you can see on the top camera all the boxes here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Makes 20. And here is the final printout. Hot off the presses. So thanks for hanging with us on a Tuesday. Appreciate it. So Tommy, that star right there next to your name means you got Last Bot Mojo. 70% of the time, Last Bot Mojo hits 100% of the time. Logan M, you've got that rooftop next to your name. That means you won that spot. Got the Chargers. Thanks, everybody, for getting in, for making this break happen. I really appreciate it. Let's make myself a little room here. I'm going to pop open five of these at a time. So there you go, 2020 Prism. Looking for some exclusives right here, laser prisms, so on and so forth. 
and of course all the big 2020 rookie names. Some basketball action on TNT on in the background. All right, good luck, everybody. Let's now start ripping open these packs. Last week, week nine was a little weird. A lot of, a lot of week nine weirdness happened. All right, Denver beat Dallas 30 to 16. Atlanta edging out the, uh, the Saints 27-25. Um, three bad turnovers from Derek Carr. Giants beat my Raiders 23 to 16. Jacksonville 9, Buffalo 6. That was weird. Baltimore take it to, had to take it to overtime to beat Minnesota. Chiefs only putting up 13 points. Wow, a, lot, a lot of weirdness happened here. Tennessee kind of easily beat the, the Rams. Seemed like they were they were in control the entire time, and Justin Fields had a great game, and was a lot closer to the Steelers than I thought they were going to be. I know no longer no more sports equinox Tuesdays are boring again. Thankfully, we can unbore you here at Jaspies. So join the uh, join the action. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. And we'll entertain you on Tuesdays. And every day, really. Seven nights a week. Jazz and Hawks now. I don't think that's a... I don't think that's a TNT game, though, unfortunately. Ryan's asking, what do you think about the game yesterday? The, uh... Yeah, the Chicago at Pittsburgh? I mean, there is... Pittsburgh kind of kept kept the Bears into the game much longer than uh, than they should have. I feel like that should have been a more easier sort of victory for St for the Steelers. But I mean, maybe this is this is the. I mean, let's let's. I'm Justin Fields had 291 th uh, passing yards, throwing yards, passing yards, a touchdown and an interception. So maybe maybe Justin Fields really starting to get comfortable in the NFL and really starting to emerge. I think that'll be awesome. Yeah, the, the I, I it what should have been a good game kind of been overshadowed by the uh, well, especially that taunting call. I mean, I think the Bears kind of shot themselves in the foot with a lot of penalties, but that taunting call was a little much. And I think that was kind of a big talking point today. I don't like the taunting call. I feel like... So it's not taunting when you get an interception and then, you know, three-quarters of the defense runs all the way to the end zone and takes, like, selfies of each other and do, like, soccer celebrations. And that's not taunting? So um, I don't know. I thought that was a little much. That gives a little too much, a little too much power to the ref, right? To just to call a taunting penalty like that for a perceived slight. I don't know what he said. Maybe it's, he he did say something on the field, but but all indications seem to be that that it, it was a little a bit of a soft penalty. All right. So vet commons don't ship, but that's silver. So that John o. Smith will obviously ship, as will those inserts. But 
These cards won't ship. Obviously, rookie cards will ship. And these ex orange exclusives right here, laser parallels, will ship. Here's a Jalen Hurts. Rookie Jalen Hurts going to the Fly Eagles Fly, Christopher. Larry Fitzgerald Silver. Van Jefferson. Champ Bailey. Devontae Adams Silver. AJ Dillon, maybe? I don't know. Scott with that rookie orange laser. Hopefully, we'll see him, see more of him as the season goes along. And that was the first five. Nothing too crazy in the first five. Next five coming out. Harry says Logan said to give you the uh, Chargers. All right, we'll wait for that in writing from Logan M, and then uh, we'll get that sorted out. It's awfully nice of Logan. Alright, next five boxes. You think, Harry, anyone's ever fallen for that? Oh, yeah, Harry said to give all four of his teams. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll work that out. I wonder if any, any breakers have less than, uh, maybe less than, a more, little more gullible group breakers have, have fallen for it. Maybe once in in breaking his case breaking history. You know, where the shot I mean you never know. You can you can catch someone being gullible. So what's coming up this week? We're in week 10 already, isn't that crazy? And we got that extra game too. We've got 17 games this year. I wonder how they divide up the, does anyone know how they divide up the home games and road games? Because obviously, with 16 games, you can get eight road games and eight home games. It's even, right? Are there some teams getting one extra home game and some teams getting an extra road game? And do they reverse that? Is it do this, Does it alternate every year? Are they just going to say screw it and make an 18-game season just so they can be nine home, nine, nine road? I don't know. 
Yeah, Gilo's thinking that extra game's gonna feel a little weird. Yeah, especially, I wonder if there's gonna be, if there's like a situation where, where like certain starters are, are forced to play game 17 because of playoff implications, when they could have had it wrapped up by week 16, or week 15 even, I wonder, and if someone someone gets injured or something like that. I mean, I think people might be in, a, in an uproar. What's my opinion on it? I, I think it's kind of unnecessary. I, I get that NFL and the owners want to make money. But, I mean, I, it kind of shows you just, you know, as much as the NFL says, hey, we're about player safety, we're about player safety. I guess they're taking away a pre... Did they take away a preseason game? I don't know. But when the NFL says, hey, we're about player safety, it kind of... You know, I don't know if that's if that's really the case. I mean, I think I would have rather taken, like, an extra... I don't know. I would have taken an extra playoff game, maybe. I guess I guess and, and and restructure the I'm not sure how the playoffs would be restructured but I take an extra week of the playoffs as opposed to just an extra as opposed to just an extra week Yeah, I guess they're taking away a preseason game and making it count. Yeah. I don't know, it sort of dilutes quality too to that. It's Justin Herbert, base Justin Herbert for the Chargers first one for Logan M who won the Chargers in this break. Let's see if we can find one in this, in that format. There's Josh Allen, who was intercepted by a Josh Allen. Sacked by a Josh Allen, different Josh Allen. But there wasn't the, there wasn't there what was the third thing? There's our first Joe Burrow. Just base rookie for Sean M in Cincinnati. Joe Burrow's gonna look to get back on track after his bye week. And a fumble recovery, that's what it was. For uh for defender Josh Allen. Ben DiNucci, silver. Trayvon Chase. Zerline. And we got a silver Austin Hooper. And a blue Philip Rivers, which I don't think is numbered. But we don't see those blue parallels too often. That's going to be for the blue horseshoes. That'll be for Sean M. And we got a relic, rookie gear, C.D. Lamb. And that'll be for Joshua and the Dallas Cowboys. A weird game for the for the Cowboys last week. A couple days ago, I guess. And a Brady for the Buccaneers, Joshua. All right. Yeah, that Pittman was nice. Let's grab all these here. 
Let's get the next five boxes going. What's going on in this basketball game here? Milwaukee up 70 to 63. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. So what's going on this week? We've got Chicago. The Bears are on a bye. Bengals are on a bye. New York Giants. Football Giants are on a bye. Houston's on a bye. Our first game of week 10 is going to be Baltimore at Miami. Who does everyone have in this game? What are your early thoughts? The uh, the Ravens are road favorites at minus seven and a half. Ravens squeaked out a win in overtime against Minnesota. Dolphins coming off a win, but I think they're I think they're still rolling with with Jacoby Brissett for the third game. I'm not sure if two is going to be ready for that Thursday game. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. I wish Tua would just stay healthy so we can really see like a stretch of games with him and see, see what he can really be. <laughs> Dang, Logan M just closed that trade window on you, Harry. Yeah, Ryan doesn't see the Dolphins winning. Do you, do you even see them covering plus seven and a half for the Dolphins home dogs? It's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be in the low 80s. Does weather, weather play a part of it? You know, I'm sure it's already much cooler in, in Baltimore. Does the heat affect them? It's a short week. For the Ravens, they have to travel, and they played OT. Played almost like an extra, extra little bit of football. Little extra aches and pains, and a short week going down to, down to, down to Miami. <laughs> Harry says, only, only, a, only an air disaster would, uh, would give the Dolphins a chance to win that game. Ryan thinks the Ravens will end up covering. David B says take Miami with the points. That's I, I'll be honest with you. That's that's kind of where I'm leaning. What's the total on that game? The total is 47, kind of a low total. So the the very the very broad, general general rule of thumb is like, hey, you know, if you've got a low total, you tend to take the dog, especially especially at home. I don't know, I'll have to think about that before I make an official pick. What other games sound interesting? Atlanta at Dallas? Is that is that interesting? Uh, Saints at Tennessee? Doesn't seem... Jacksonville at Indianapolis? Cleveland at New England? Buffalo at New York? Giant, at New York Jets? Detroit at Pittsburgh? Tampa Bay at Washington? Carolina at Arizona? Minnesota playing the Chargers? I don't know if any of these games seem terribly exciting. I guess Seattle at Green Bay. Russell Wilson's back. No, Ryan likes Cleveland versus New England. I like that Kansas City at, at my Raiders. And Rams at uh, Rams at San Francisco on Monday night. That seems pretty exciting, too. What, how do I feel about all the Dodgers free agents? Yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen. You want, you want Kershaw in Philadelphia? There's a chance Kershaw might not even pitch next year. He's, he's attempting to rehab that injury. With his elbow, nice. There's Brian Edwards, rookie gear. P 
piece of his jersey going to my Raiders for Corey. Yeah, Steve and Al are saying New England's going to dominate Cleveland in that game. <laughs> Rugs over under two and a half years in jail. I'll take the over on that. Tom Brady fireworks insert. Yeah, Dodgers do have a lot of free agents that they get, that they got to take care of. I think I'm not sure if they're gonna. I think they're gonna make offers to everybody. I think Corey Seager is probably the most likely to go, to go elsewhere. Scherzer probably too, but I think the Dodgers are probably a little more inclined to try to keep Scherzer, over, um, Scherzer over Corey Seager. I think they'll eventually get the deal done with Kershaw. I think they want to make him a Dodger lifer. He's sort of on a different, you know. I think he's being approached differently from other players. Josh, uh, sorry, not Josh Dave, Jonathan Taylor having a great season. That's a rookie card going to Sean M. Kenley Jansen's a free agent. I think he was making, what, 20 some odd million a year. I think Dodgers do have Blake Trinan in that bullpen, so I think they'll let I think oh nice Joe Burrow silver. I think they'll let Jansen walk unless the market for him dries up and the Dodgers can get him at a at a decent price. I'm sure I'm sure the Dodgers will make him offer too, but I think there'll be other teams that will pay more for Kenley Jansen. Although he did change it, up his mechanics a little bit, made him look really really great at the end of the season. Um, Sean M with the Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow silver. Nice, he's having a solid season. I think Harry, I think uh, if the Phillies are looking for, for starting pitching, my guess is he, he'd have a better shot at getting uh, getting Max Scherzer. I, don't, I mean, how much money is Max Scherzer going to command on the secondary mar or secondary market? On the, uh, on the open market, that is, on the free agent market. At his age... In the end, I'm not sure if the Dodgers are going to try to maybe re-sign Kershaw almost certainly. And I'm not sure if they're going to be if they're going to retain any of the other guys. Chris Taylor will probably get a nice contract. He had an excellent season. They may just try to save the money and see if Bellinger ends up being uh, gets back on track. He'll go to arbitration and get the one-year deal, and then they'll extend him if they can. Same with Trey Turner. I think he's got an arb ear. And then they'll try to extend him too. But I think the Dodgers are really counting on on a lot of the, the, the youngsters to really come up the ranks. They, they, they need Gavin Lux to be an everyday player and he was hitting pretty well. And hopefully he can be, you know, maybe just short of all-star level over the next coming couple of years or so. They'd love that. And they've got other youngsters coming up the pipeline. They really didn't expect kind of an aging Justin Turner to play as much as he did this season. I think he kind of wore down towards the end of the season. But if there's a healthy Edwin Rios, that that's, which would be pretty awesome. He was hitting really well before he went down with a shoulder injury this year. 
But yeah, I think they kind of want him, want Edwin Rios to kind of play a little bit more. And then they could piece together the rest and they'll wait for Dustin May to maybe come back in the middle of next season. So it'll be a lot of, lot of, lot of questions. It'll be an interesting offseason for the Dodgers and for baseball just because they're going to figure out the collective bargaining agreement too. So who knows what the free agent market's going to be like because we don't even know what the season's going to be like. You know, there may be a, could be a work stoppage, a little delay to the start of the season and who knows how free agent money stuff can change. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. Kenley Jansen would fit nicely in that Phil in that Philadelphia bullpen, Harry. And if he keeps the mechanics that he that he had with the Dodgers at the end of the season in the playoffs, if he keeps those mechanics, that, I mean that's a really good sign. Rex, so Veterans Day is Thursday. You Pulsar is delivering the holiday. I actually don't know if the United, if UPS delivers on. I think they I think they do. They do deliver on federal holidays, right? Unless they get off, I'm not sure. Anyone know off the top of their heads? Anyone in the anyone work for United Parcel Service? All right, we made it. Final five boxes. Good luck, everybody. Another Jonathan Taylor. There's a Jordan Love. Not a great game for Jordan Love. I think that Devontae Adams is different, right? Yeah, that's a different parallel. That's a disco parallel here. Anyway, both of those Packers going to Scott in Green Bay. I mean, this must be short printed in Blasters. It's the, the disco refractor as opposed to those orange laser refractors. Jordan Love right here. Rough game for him. But this could be the this could be the future of the Packers quarterback situation. Marcus Lawrence, C.D. Lamb Emergent. Isaiah Simmons, Rookie Silver. There's a Tua. Base card, base rookie going to Miami. That'll be for you, Harry. A little something there, maybe some more. And a Jordan Love orange laser. The laser? Velocity? They've, they've mixed, they've had various names for these over the years. But there it is. Again, that's for Green Bay, that's for Scott. Antonio Gandy Golden, rookie silver. I guess he has some, maybe, does he have upside? I feel like he, he should, he does. That's a catch, right? You know, that's eyes locking on the ball. Maybe those disco parallels may be a little more common than I saw. We saw a couple more there. Another Fournette, Devin Singletary, Silver, Joe Namath. Haskins. 
Reds. And a Tua Relic. Nice. Premier Rookie Relic. Going to Harry and the Dolphins. Just need him to get back on track, that's all. And the last little bits here. Grant Del Pitt at the end. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, everybody, for watching and for breaking with us. Appreciate it. Here's a quick look back at some of the parallels that we pulled. And that's the name of the game in these blaster sets is making sure you can get these parallels. That Joe Burrow, Silver especially, are stuff that we're trying to chase. The top QB names in their silver parallels is what we're really looking for. And there you go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. That was 2020 Prism Football 20 Box Blaster Edition, Pigotine number 11, on a Tuesday, Tuesday the 9th. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.